Hello everybody! We are cutting Peter and Beatrice and today we want to explain you some things regarding Chapter 7 Business Strategies. We hope the information based on the Exploring Strategy book will help you to learn for your exam. Okay, now we're coming to the four different generic strategies. So the first one is the cost leadership strategy. And this strategy is in involving in becoming the lowest cost organization in a domain or activity. And therefore they are using four key drivers. The first one is to input costs. They need to lower their costs for labor or raw materials. Then the second one is the economies of scale. So they need to increase the scale for, uh, to reduce the average cost of operation. The next one is the experience. The more experience the organization has, the more efficient it gets. And the last one is the product or process design. So the efficiency can be designed in at the outset. Then there are two more key drivers, which is parity, which means the equivalence, and then the proximity, which is closeness. So therefore the cost leadership really wants to be the first. And in, therefore, if you are the first, you are more secure than being second or third. Then the second strategy is the differentiation strategy. This strategy involves the uniqueness along some dimension that is sufficiently valued by customers to allow a price premium. And therefore, this strategy is dealing um, with four types. First, they, uh, the products and service attributes, they need to be really good and um, really different from their competitors. Then you have the customer relationships. They really need to maintain a good customer relationship in order to produce their products and that the customer is selling their products. Then uh, the third one is that they complement, uh, need to complement. For example, uh, you have the iTunes and Apple Store, they are complementing each other. And then uh, the, uh, the last thing is that differentiation allows a higher price, but they usually just come at a cost. So the higher the price you pay, pay for a product, the higher the cost is to produce it. And therefore, differentiation is really focusing on being different than other competitors in the market. So now we continue to the third strategy, which is focus. However, focus is divided into two types. So first you have the cost focus. And uh, cost focuses, they identify areas where broader cost-based strategies fail because of added cost. And therefore, uh, they are trying to satisfy a, a wide range of needs. So it really is uh, focusing on the cost and therefore, um, yeah, it will be, they want to be the, the cost leaders in the segment. And differentiation focuses, they look for specific needs that broader differentiation do not serve so well. So they really want to differentiate and um, a specific, specific target group. So focus really means that they focus on a different segment and then uh, they divide it in cost and differentiation. And there are, uh, when you want to have a successful strategy in the, co the focus strategy, you really uh, need to depend on one of the three factors, which is distinct the segment needs. So you focus on uh, the di distinctiveness of segment needs. So if a segment distinctive ero erodes, it becomes harder to define the segment against uh, broader competitors. Uh, the other one is distinct uh, segment value chains. So really, fo this strategy really focuses on the strength of, and if they have a distinctive value chain that will have difficult or costly for arrivals to construct. And the third one is the valuable segment economics. And therefore this segment can easily become too small to serve economically as demand or supply. So based on those three key factors, the um, company should focus on either cost focus or differentiation focus. Then um, there is one strategy added, but it's not in this um, table because it's a combination of different strategies and it's called the hybrid strategy. And the hybrid strategy is a combination of uh, cost leadership and differentiation. So it wants to have the lower cost, but it also wants to differentiate from the uh, competitors and therefore they are using a hybrid strategy. So now we continue with the strategy clock. This strategy clock uh, identifies three types of strategies and one type of strategy who is likely to fail. The first one is the differentiation strategy. This strategy has a range from 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock and it has two different types. 
it's the differentiation without price premium and the differentiation with price premium. The differentiation without price premium combines high perceived benefits and moderate prices. And the strategy for differentiation with price premium is closer to one or two o'clock since it is um, likely to involve a focus strategy. Then when we continue, the second one is the low prices uh, strategy. And this is from close to nine o'clock position. And um, this strategy has a standard as a low price. And it will gain market share by combining low prices with reasonable value. And um, the third one, it's zone three, it's the hybrid strategy. It's from nine o'clock to 12 o'clock. And this uh, strategy is allowing a low price and a differentiation. So as it already mentioned in the different strategies, it's um, the combination of the low cost leadership strategy and a differentiation strategy, which makes the hybrid strategy. And the last zone, it's the non-competitive strategy. And this strategy is likely to fail because um, they have low benefits and there is high prices and uh, customers uh, are not uh, wanted to pay for this. So this one is leading to failure. Now we continue uh, with the business models. This is explained via a video we found on the internet. For a company to matter in the minds of its customers, its strategy needs a distinctive element that sets it apart from rivals and produces a competitive edge. Closely related to the concept of strategy is the concept of a company's business model. A company's business model sets forth how its strategy and operating approaches will create value for customers while at the same time generating ample resources to cover costs and realize a profit. The two elements of a company's business model are first, its customer value proposition, and second, its profit formula. Let's take a look. The customer value proposition is established by the company's overall strategy and lays out the company's approach to satisfying buyer wants and needs at a price that customers will consider a good value. The greater value provided at the lower price, the more attractive the value proposition is to customers. The profit formula describes the company's approach to determining a cost structure that will allow for acceptable profits given the pricing tied to its customer value proposition. The lower the cost given the customer value proposition, the greater the ability of the business model to be a moneymaker. The nitty gritty issue surrounding a company's business model is whether it can execute its customer value proposition profitably. Just because company managers have crafted a strategy for competing and running a business does not automatically mean the strategy will lead to profitability. It may or may not. Thank you for watching our video about business models, chapter 7 of the Exploring Strategy book. We hope that you can use this video to learn for your exam and therefore we will wish you luck for your exam in week 8. This video is made by Peter, Beatrice and Karen.